This is the Insomniac Anonymous podcast, now an Xbox One and Windows 10 exclusive. Today on the podcast, we talk about all the things that happened at E3. There's a ton of new games that we're really excited about. We talk about things, of course, like Overwatch, like how there's a new competitive mode, and how much we've been sucking at it. Well, for the most part, I mean, it's still pretty good. And as you can probably tell, Brian has a cold again. So stick around for this and a couple of more things. It should be a fun one. So, yeah. Hello and welcome to the episode that we are calling number 11 because it comes right after 10. This is the Insomniac Anonymous podcast. My name is Brian. I am joined by some pretty awesome people. We have Cat in a Box. Hello. We have Dude Red. I'm back in black. And Squaws. Woohoo. How's it going, guys? It's been a while. I know it's peaking. been so long. It's been so long since yes, we've done Yes, it this. has. What the fuck have you been doing, Brian? Well, you know, apparently I've just been failing at life and internet life apparently because oh yeah, yeah. it's been Damn yeah, it. like, were you getting one of those real life things again what did i tell you about they're bad for you they're bad <laughs> for the internet folk <laughs> yes they corrupt your brain and your body and they make it all healthy and shit you know what i just can't seem to learn i think that's the problem you know would somebody you need really more mountain needs- dew and doritos fucker oh man it- <laughs> Maybe that would help, you know, because I've never really been a fan of Mountain Dews or Doritos. So I feel like maybe Actually, this you know is why I'm failing at gaming life. I, I take it back. You're Canadian, and it's Canada Day. You need so an you need Tim amount Hortons of maple donuts. syrup. <laughs> Tim Hortons and maple syrup. That's exactly yes. what it has. <laughs> and bacon. Cause you're I mean, uh, you're yeah. apparently in such dire need that we need to just IV hook that shit right into your veins, and since that doesn't really go through an IV, we're going to have to squeeze the bag real hard. It's going to hurt a little bit, but we're going to get you a nice high <laughs> dose of syrup real quick. All oh, that nice maple syrupy goodness just inside your yeah. veins. It's going to be amazing. And then once you're done, we're going to put in some cheese curds in there. It's mm. going to be great, guys. Just in case the the syrup didn't stop your heart already. (laughs) Exactly. And, you know, you guys brought up a good point. Happy Canada Day. It's it's July 1st. Where the hell did June go? I just don't know. But, yeah, so happy Canada Day. Gone, get rid of it. June's a bitch. One more summer month gone. I hate (laughs) summer. Well, I mean, for Canada, you know, what's that? Like the last two weeks of July, that's our summer? If we're lucky? Our summer. Yeah. For summer, Sorry. like, there's a, such a thing in Canada. Well, I well, mean, sometimes we get lucky and we get about a summer, week and a half. <laughs> and I What's... think I think in Canada there's like there's two seasons. There's winter, and then there's August. <laughs> Pretty much, but you know what, man? Those those autumn months, man, they're the best. Cannot complain. Probably my favorite season. All right, guys, so what have you guys been up to since the last three weeks that we haven't, you know, been recording? Anybody want to share any special adventures they might have had? Well, I have had way too many special adventures. Somebody else go first. Uh, oh, I <laughs> okay. have a really disappointed one. Oh, yeah? Well, I, I, I resubbed to EVE Online, and I forgot that yeah. I had a, a pod um, that had very, very expensive implants, and I'm like, oh, let's go for, like, a suicide uh, run and just, like, fuck around everywhere i'm like okay i'm just going there and all of a sudden i lose my ship 100 million I'm like oh, okay whatever and then i lose my pod and when we see the kill mails we're like why did our uh, bank just spike and then we realized that i was wearing about 600 million worth of implants in my head and that was just disgusting <laughs> And you lost them all. Yeah. That'll teach me to like not play for a couple of years and then come back and not recheck of what I'm wearing. Couple of years, my ass. Did you even make it 12 months? I did. I did. Actually, it's 15 months. 15 months. All right. That I'll is still not years. more than two years. <laughs> <laughs> you can't put an S at the end of that. <laughs> Close yeah, to a couple of years. Technically, yeah, because technically you need at least two years in order to call it a couple. Close to a couple, then. And you need what? At least three to call it a few? Yep. There we go. 
A couple of few years. At least years. that's the general convention. <laughs> couple of few years. So what is that, like six? <laughs> Technically, it would be six. Yeah, that makes sense. Couple of three years. Yeah. There you go. But yeah, you know what? That's the problem, man. EVE Online, it's one of those like really, really angry exes where you come back to them and then they just kind of fuck you over. Be like, yo, why you been gone so long? It's happened to me in World of Warcraft as well. So I know the pain. Oh my god, the winking lizard just has their monthly beer. It's bright fucking pink. And I, I have oh yeah. no idea what any <laughs> of those words that came out of your mouth just meant. Uh, I'm, I'm with you. I have no idea where that came from. Is this that, like, a, that is was this from like my an email? American thing? Yeah. Well, no. So I've told you guys about the world tour of beers, right? I feel like I have. It's something I, I need to post about in the forums officially, but I, I've mentioned it in passing. I know I have. The world of what? Now? World tour. You know, like go on a tour. Like the world competition of beards, or is this more no. like a beer? Beer, alcohol. Oh, beer. Oh, okay. Beer. World tour of beer. I, I okay. So huh. the tavern that me and my friends hang out that I grew up at because it's you know technically family friendly until like eight p.m. Um, I've been going there since I was three um they have this thing where for the entire calendar year january 1st to december 31st um if you can drink 100 unique to you beers um at their venue then you, know, you get prizes and rewards and bragging rights and shit um, the big thing being a end of the year party that is completely paid for, catered, and entertainment. Um, and no, not adult entertainment before somebody makes that joke. I mean, I'm sure somebody's getting a nod in the bathroom, but whatever. Um, but, and like a really nice jacket that's got, you know, the, the logo emblazed and everything on it. Um, but this place, the reason they do that is because they have a huge library of beer that they can't stock all at once because it's literally hundreds of different beers um, from all these different breweries. And that's their, one of their ways of marketing all these different beers they have. Um, but they also have glasses of the month, uh, which are a specialty beer for that month uh, from a specific brewery. And you buy it. And you get to keep the glass that it comes in that was made specifically for that beer, usually supplied by the manufacturer. Um, and so the one for this month is a, like, mug kind of stein glass. And it's a summer ale, and it's bright fucking pink. Awesome. That sounds amazing. So, pink I'll... beer glass. Well, that's what you're talking no, about. No, the beer itself is pink. Okay, so the beer is pink. Got yes. it. Awesome. All right. You know, that'll be actually great for, like, you know, uh, February or something. You know, like, raising awareness for, like, breast cancer. It's, like, pink beer goes towards that. I don't know. Anyways, just I don't know. To get it out seems here. to actually have a Mexican on the bottle, so I'm, I don't know about that. Okay. That's I, interesting. I don't know. All right. Well, um... I know we have a couple of things that we want to talk about. Actually, not a couple of things. A few things. Or a maybe lot of things. Or even a couple of few things. Or a couple of couple of few few things. Maybe a lot of things. Yeah, we could just say a lot. Let's go with a lot of things. Maybe I too mean, many things. We have way too many things to talk about. Uh, before we started recording this podcast, I was like, I was talking to myself. I was like, you know, Bri Bri, this week, let's try to just keep it short. Maybe half an hour. And then I was like, but wait a second. We have to talk about E3. Right there, it's got to be at least an hour. There's all this stuff happening in Overwatch. And there's so many other games that are kind of like, you know, dude, like, we half an hour is not going to cut it. So let's just get right down to it. Like, what was the thing that you guys were excited about, about E3 this year? Cuphead. Watch Dogs 2. <laughs> wait, uh, wait, really? wait. Okay, now, <laughs> no, as, really. as, 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 we'll get back to Cuphead because, like, because yeah. I know that game looks fantastic. Cuphead does kind of look fantastic. But, <laughs> Squaws, <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? Exactly. The major disappointments of Ubisoft and their uh, pretend scripted everything. And uh, people already know that. it's it, They're going to downgrade their games. And already the Ghost Recon uh, Wildlands 
they just showed up some pre-gameplay and of obviously the, the gameplay was completely uh, downgraded the graphics were downgraded it's not even the same game that we saw in the previews really so okay so from the preview that we know how we saw today that there were like i think five people playing in the team or whatever yeah and uh, so nothing to do with the game this is just not even not even close so you're saying there was a previous trailer before this oh no no there was they they released the gameplay right afterwards like a couple of days ago Oh, and what happened? It was completely different. It was bland. It was nothing like it. There was less vegetation. The explosions were very blah. Oh man. The that explosions just... were blah. <laughs> they were, they were not they were not epic. The, so the... you're saying it needs more Michael Bay in here. I'm saying it they need to advertise whatever they are actually going to release. And people are knowing it and I'm just waiting right now for Watch Dogs 2 to have that that extreme downgrade and not even be anywhere similar to what we saw at E3. Yeah, because I remember you showed me that video of the the comparisons and I was like, wow, that is like a huge downgrade. Yep. Like, I mean, it was like night and day, like seeing these two things together. It was just like one looked super pretty and super next gen and the other one just looked like this looks slightly better than like PS2 era. You know, well, okay, I'm kind of exaggerating here. It's like more like, you know, yeah, okay, PS3, I can kind of see that, whatever. But yeah. it was still very like, yeah, like just very bland, very like. Even know, right, even like, Rainbow Six, the, the one that has the least amount of downgrade would be probably um, The Division. But I but also noticed that. that one had like a lot of downgrades because I remember seeing a comparison video back in the early days before the game was released about like all this stuff that. You know, they were like touting, like saying that, oh, yeah, it's going to have like dynamic this and lighting that. And, oh, you yeah. know, they removed the dynamic lighting. They removed the, uh, uh, the, the the specific shaders that actually reflect, uh, the, for example, a light for a car will reflect on a puddle under it. Mm -hmm. But it's no longer the case because the, the reflection will always it's like a, it's like fake reflection. You shoot the, the light out of the car, but you'll still see the reflection. Yeah, which is really messed up. Now, is there? Do you think is there's a reason why they've done like such a big downgrade? I mean, is it really like a console limitation, or like? Well, I mean, from from what the forums are saying is that the the reason for that is that they get better sales uh, on console. So what they want, well, they get more money out of console sale um, because then you have the um, how do you say that? If if the graphics would be so awesome on the PC and you can get like so much better performance and gameplay out of the PC, mm -hmm. nobody nobody would buy them on the consoles. Like, why would you buy it on the console if you can get that same kind of performance on the PC? So for them, they would. I, I'm thinking they would lose money. I mean, that's what the internet's going as a as a theory. Okay, now that that does make sense. That they want to I mean, keep there's, the there's same been games in the past though, when like you know. It's like the gameplay like stays the same, but like obviously you can tell there's a much better, ex like visual experience on PC, you know. But so, I mean, if that was really the reason, it just it feels a little bit kind of like you guys are dumb, yo. You know, like I mean, why not go for the pretty wonderful looking game on at least one co on at least one platform? They probably have a contract like deal with uh, the consoles, like with Sony and Microsoft. That could be true. You never know what's going on in the background. Exactly. They probably say, okay, we will fund part of your uh, development, but you cannot make the PC version better than ours. Which totally sucks for the PC Master Race. Exactly. <laughs> I.e. us. Yep. The same thing happened with the Batman series, where they even they even bothered, just outsourced it, and it was so bad. They actually, it's the game that was re uh, removed from Steam for a while before they, until they fixed it. Wow. That is messed up. So, I mean, other than that, like, okay, so now let's get down into the E3 stuff. Was there anything that you guys are really looking forward to? Like, dude, Run, I know you said Cuphead. So, oh, hell yeah. Tell me, what is it that is really kind of psyching you up about this game? I am a sucker for platformers and very pretty art styles, and this is exactly that. <laughs> awesome. Holy shit. It looks exactly like old Disney cartoons. Yep. It really does. Oh like when God. I first saw it, I thought like Disney was making a platformer game, which is one of those things that's like, well, why haven't they? You know, like I mean, 
Wait, that, that art style not is to totally worth it. Mm. Okay, when was the last time that Disney made like a platformer game? Fucking, I forget. It's a Mickey Mouse game. Yeah, that much. Like, I mean, are we talking about Super Nintendo era? Because I have that game. Uh, there is Super Nintendo. There was the NES one. It was Mickey Mouse Capades. I'm talking about any time in the last Anytime. ten to t- ten fifteen. See, years. I'm pretty sure. Epic Mickey counts as a platformer, doesn't it? It does, but it was kind of, it was like a 3D platformer, you know? Yeah, but it's still a platformer. There's nothing in the last 10 years that I th- can think of that was a 2D platformer. Right, like a side-scroller type of game. Uh, they did a remaster of uh, DuckTales. For oh, PlayStation yeah. 3. oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. DuckTales. But it was, it, it was a remaster, so slightly technically doesn't really count, but no, yeah, no. that's a good one, though. Gonna get sued by Disney. It's DuckTales. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> so anybody else uh, that you're looking forward to? Any kind of games that really, really stoked about? Final Fantasy 15. I saw that game. Now, what is it that has you really interested about it? Well, I like I like big worlds, open worlds, big giant fights. Like, you know, when uh, God of War, you're fighting this giant monster. Mm-hmm. And that's what uh, attracted me about Final Fantasy XV. I mean, you're you're in a car, you're in an open world, and all of a sudden a mountain stands up. You're like, what? A mountain just stood up and is about to attack me. That's the type, <laughs> and it's pretty. I'm I'm a, I'm a graphics whore, and it's it's pretty. I will admit it's a really pretty game. <laughs> I will admit it's a pretty game. As far as con uh, combat, though, I don't know if I'm really sold on that game. Like I saw. The combat where he was like fighting like that huge hand thing, yeah, and it just the combat seemed very floaty, very skittish, you know. And I don't know if I'm completely sold on it on how reliable that whole combat scene is. So I mean, I kind of, to be honest, like I kind of miss those days of like you know turn based RPG shoot RPG shooters <laughs> RPG games. <laughs> but <laughs> uh, can you imagine? Uh, you have to wait a turn <laughs> before you can try to headshot somebody. Exactly. You, you miss. You laugh, but that's you gotta wait another is. round. And Technically, Destiny... it would be like Fallout or something, right? Like mm. turn-based, like first-person yeah. shooter. The first-person art art RPG. RPG. Like, uh, yeah. Yeah. JRPG, I should say. No, JRPG is Japanese. Exactly. So a first-person oh, yeah. JRPG. <laughs> first person GRPG. Well, I guess RPG is not really turn based anymore. It's more like just any game where you're assuming a role. This is true. So something like Elder Scrolls is a first person RPG. This is true. It's I not just turn based combat. Feel ba- I feel back in the day, GRPGs were kind of like um, considered like any game where you know you had like a combat, like turn based combat type of uh, game. Yeah, and then they evolved beyond that, and it they, became they pretty have, interesting. Yeah. They have become somewhat interesting. I, I I feel like I haven't really played enough of them to really kind of get it. As in, like, you know, oh, why is this fun? But, um, again, like, I mean, just from looking at the combat, it just it didn't seem like it was really that precise. I don't know if I can really explain it too well, but it would be definitely interesting to see and to play that game. Final Fantasy game. But so. it is, it is to be fair, it is a Final Fantasy game where combat is a very minute part of it, where like exploring and mm-hmm. finding and detective work, that kind of stuff would probably take more precedence, no? Oh no, for sure, yeah. So, <laughs> I'm definitely looking forward to that, and of course, there's a Final Fantasy 7 remaster that's happening still. Yeah. So, oh, I can yeah. always get my JRPG retro fix right there as well. I think they were going to change the combat system, though, to something similar to what they have now, rather oh, than turn-based. Oh, you know based. what? Yep. You're right. I think I did hear about that. Huh. So that will actually give it, like, a fresh look. Hmm. That'll be good. Okay. In any case, I'm I'm totally down with it. Um, How, how about you, Shro? Is there anything that you've seen that you might be up to um, um, really, like, kind of soaked about getting? I mean... To me, E3 has kind of been a shit show of silliness for a few years, so I've stopped paying attention to it. And there was something I was interested in, and now I don't even remember what it was, so it wasn't apparently that interesting. 
Was it Watch Dogs? I bet it was Watch Dogs. No. Wait, it totally was. It, was. We it probably was we... the dog part of Watch Dogs. And then I was like, oh, wait, it's Watch Dogs. That's a game. And then I was like, never mind. Was it We I, Happy Few? Because I think that we were was talking about that. Earlier. Actually, no, you're right. It was, was We Happy favorite. Few. Yeah. That was, that was probably my too. favorite. I'll let one Brian talk too. about that one. Well, I mean, I don't really have much to say about it other than it looks freaking amazing. It and does. that music in the trailer has like a total kind of like 60s vibe, which is totally like awesome. It's, as a music it's homage to a uh, homage, whatever you want to say it. It's homage to a uh, Bioshock, and we all know it. Yeah. Oh, yes. Of course it is. That, yeah. Everything from like kind of like the art style to like the the art the color palette and everything has like a very like bioshocky feel to it. I mean the feel of the universe by the looks of it. It's it, 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 like, it's like a mix of the first two Bioshocks with the splicers and then the the world and the prettiness and then all the colors from Bioshock Infinite. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Is it by the same studio or? Uh no, I believe it's a different studio. I just can't remember. Okay. Which one? But yeah, there's that, and apparently it's gonna be like um, it's gonna be like a roguelike game. So apparently, if you die, then you got to start all over again, that type of thing. So, uh, oh really? You'll be able, yeah. So you'll uh, be able to like you know, switch up your choices a lot, you know. And it's just like it's gonna be a really really fun game to just kind of explore. That was, huh? Oh, then really weird interest me. Because, sorry. It wasn't really interesting until you said that. I was like, oh, okay, so it's more of a like Groundhog Day where you die or you fail and then you just start over again, but this time you got another chance. Exactly, yeah. So I feel like that's going to give it a bit more, you know, life. I mean, I was really looking forward to it as kind of like a just like a one-time through sto- storytelling thing, but I mean, when you look at the trailer, even from the very beginning, you know, where he decides whether he wants to take the pill or not, so there's definitely a lot of choices to make. So making it a rogue type game that where you can just like play over and over again um yeah it definitely makes a lot more sense to you know incorporate more choices almost like a you know choose your own adventure book type of thing well, well talk, talking about choices um there was that uh, android game um not not android like a uh, phone android but it's a it's a robot and then you have to make choices to solve a case I, uh, all right this is our story I don't know if you guys heard of that one. I vaguely remember. I think I have, maybe. So basically the game is exactly how you described the other one, where um, you have 20 different choices, and depending on what choice you make, you have 20 different endings of the story. And uh, the trailer for the uh, E3 was an android talking to another android who had a little girl hostage. So you had 20 different options. You can either call a... a sniper shot or decide to uh, negotiate with him or um, shoot him in the head or you know this, they they presented like 12 different choices in that trailer and they every single choice finished differently some of them with your death some of them with the mission failing that little girl dies some of them you winning the mission some of them you know different characteristics different endings i'm trying to find it right now and i i think it's that's what it's called this is our story Cool. What do you guys yeah. think? Of... Sorry, go ahead. No, I was just looking at uh, thing at uh, that choices, but uh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I was gonna say that there's definitely like a lot of fun games out there, especially like a lot on the multiplayer front. Like there was that um, um, there was that Star Trek game where you know like everybody has like a role on the ship, and I've seen that game before, but it was like kind of titled as something else. It wasn't officially a Star Trek licensed game. It was Artemis, Bridge Simulator, or um, Pulsar. I think it was Artemis. That sounds familiar. Um, I'm I have really Artemis. Into, I'm not into like the Star Trek thing, but I mean, I thought that was kind of cool, you know, for like maybe like a, a multiplayer like game night, you know, where you have your friends over or something like that. So, well, yeah, it's here, interesting. The there's I see cons in that, and that probably will bring us. Um, I'm, I, w- I want to talk this before we go into the VR discussion. Um, we'll talk about uh, the Star Trek bridge simulator before yeah. we go into that for sure um what do you guys think of the civ 6 changes uh, um, i, I didn't actually see the changes what was or changes it's more toony it's more cartoony vivid colors uh 
the trees look like, you know, cones instead of actual trees. Really? Like actual... See... You kind of had me when you said like more cartoony, more like thing, because I mean that game is pretty ridiculous. Sometimes it can it can get fairly ridiculous, but if the trees look like, are, do they actually just look more geometrical in shape rather yeah. than like? Yeah, I don't know about that. Well, the reason for that is because in you know in Civ Five where you had to build something, and let's say you build uh, upgrades, they would be built inside of your city, inside of your cell, right? But this, but now with the new Civ Six, the upgrades are expanded out of your city, so your city will have a twelve by twelve hexagonal radius. Uh, now that every time you add something, the city grows and grows and grows. So when you're attacking somebody, you should be able to like differentiate. Oh, they have barracks or they have this like on the spot. So the art design team decided to simply say, okay, well we need quick visual cues. That's what the the developers were saying uh, in the interviews at E3, that they changed the art style because they had to change the gameplay into more de- in depth um, building. I see. Okay. So it's huh. more vivid colors. Uh, you know, now you don't have very realistic looking uh, cities, but now you have more identifiers. Okay, so this here is a barracks. So I know that this city has a barracks. So I know what to expect. That'll be really interesting to see. I'll have to check that out and and see just what these trees exactly look like, and then I'll be able to <laughs> kind of make a decision whether I'm for it or against it. Because I don't like Brian, the trees. I don't. <laughs> Brian like makes game. a decision whether he likes the game or not by the trees. Exactly, it's important <laughs> stuff, man. Priorities. Think of the trees, man. Will somebody please think of the trees? They have feelings too. They got to provide oxygen for people. Exactly. They don't deserve us. Oh, by the way, also, um, what was that pirate game called? The one that we saw? The sea of fun. Thieves. Sea of Thieves. That I'm getting. That's for sure. Like, how fun does that look? Oh man, it, it looks it looks it looks amazing. <laughs> Can we all just please take control of a pirate ship and go on adventures? Well, that's Thank that's you. a point. That would be awesome. Let's Im- imagine that. an Ark server. So you you guys have played Ark, right? I've seen enough yeah, of it that I know what it's it, like, yeah. even though I yeah. still want to play it. Okay. So imagine an, an ARC server. So you have like 60-some people. It's really large and everything. And then you have your friends and uh, Guns of Icarus. Have you guys played that game? Which no. One? Guns I of actually Icarus. own it, but I haven't played it. So basically you're in an airship, and then you control everything on that airship. So it's kind of a mix between ARC and Guns of Icarus. Mm-hmm. It's amazing. Like people have their roles. So you have the guy piloting the the ship. Then you have the guy like on top doing scouts and targeting. Then you have the gunners on the on the cannons, and then you know the repairman that pretty much patches the hole before you sink. Yeah. So everybody kind of has their own, you know, their own job, and they gotta like, yep, not fuck it up, dude. Yep. Run. <laughs> it happened once. I lost the wrench. The thing shot at me. I dropped the wrench off the ship. I'm sorry. I got <laughs> shot. What do you fucking want from me, you little shit? <laughs> and it's and it's PvP and PvE at the same time because you know you there are islands everywhere. You ha- you go and you pretty much berth your ship Sick. on the island and you go exploring like all five or four or whatever the party's made of. You find your treasure, you loot it, and then you bring it back to your base. No, if you have treasure on you, do you really want to fight that ship or run away? Or you could be a pirate and pretty much fight people for their loot. That sounds amazing. I am definitely going to be getting that game. And <laughs> for sure. I really wonder how. what are they going to price it at? Like, do you think this is going to be like a full price game or do you think it might be like, you know, um, like a $40 Canadian type of game? I think it's going to be between 20 and 40. Like okay. one of those uh, not triple A games that they sell for 79.99, but also not one of those indies that are 9.99. All right. I could see that. Either way, like I would I'm definitely down for getting that and uh having adventures with you guys out in the open seas. Oh, I'm definitely <laughs> definitely getting that game. In the meantime, you can quench your thirst of that type of game by getting uh, Guns of Icarus. Awesome. I'll have to check that out. 
If you guys get it, let me know because I want to play it and just don't have friends. Cool. We yeah, know you don't have friends. Oh. Yeah, we know you don't have friends. Oh. <laughs> you walked into enough. that one. <laughs> I did. I did. It was a good bird. That's what happens. It was a good bird. God complex. Not dangerous enough to have friends. I'm 24% dangerous. It's not enough. You need to be 30. Okay, fine. I'll work on it. Okay. Work it, work it. Um, anything else that we've seen? I mean, you know, I'm actually surprised that there's another Gears of War game coming out. I'm not. They sound like they'd be milking that for all it's worth. For Xbox One, Windows 10, exclusively. Exclusive. Exactly. <laughs> like everything else from the Xbox conference. Yeah, everything was fairly exclusive. But at least anything new that's coming out of Xbox is available for Windows 10. Which is awesome. Yes. Cross-platform or just like... Yeah. Okay. Well, I don't know. I don't know about the servers uh, for multiplayer because that may cause big issues. So I I don't have that information yet. Why can't people just work that out? I know, right? We well, have I mean, the technology Minecraft, to record We know that like it's presses. all gonna be, you know, like I can jump in on my phone, and if um, Squaz has like a Windows 10 Minecraft server going, yeah, you can I start can one, then we can join on just that. Join him up on his uh, PC there. Yeah, well, M Minecraft is completely different from a uh, first person shooter like battlefield or call of duty like imagine if you're playing call of duty against some somebody versus uh controller versus keyboard mouse like th they have no chance they really don't and i mean like as much as like people say oh controller is better and like you know then like i don't know crazy people say that um in the end it really is preference because it's true like mouse just offers better precision and this is not me as uh, somebody who's part of the PC master race saying so. It's just that's just the way it is. Yeah. And actually, even console peasants have said it that keyboard and mouse is better. Exactly. Even the peasants have said it. <laughs> then it must be Stop true. Stop alienating our console viewers. <laughs> <laughs> like the one console viewer we have. Um, listener, just I should say. sitting in the corner crying. He's like, <laughs> oh, well, I, I saw. Present. I, I saw on Reddit the funniest post when they were saying that the Xbox One now is uh, um, Xbox One is now uh, offering uh, 60 FPS games, and then PC Master Race completely shut them up by saying, it's "Like, it's like, what do you care? You can only see 24 frames a second." Whoa! <laughs> uh, shots fired! Shots fired! Not that you could see them in your 24 frames. <laughs> all right, all right. You know what? Let's try to make nice with these console gamers. Like, I'm, I'm just gonna let's let's tell a little joke for them. All right. Here's a joke. Squaws. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Why? Squaws did the is dangerous level. <laughs> why did the console gamer cross the road? Uh, so it can rend the other si render the other side. <laughs> render the building from the other side. Wah, wah. I know. Anyways, um, anything else that I'm missing from E3 before we jump out of that? Fucking Zelda. Oh yeah, Zelda. I only saw a part of it, and I wasn't really that impressed. I don't know. I was what, just what watching gameplay out of it. So, like, tell me, what was it that like really grabbed you guys about it? Pretty much the lore. Like we don't know where it when it when it's in the timeline. That's the only thing. I mean, you see uh, ruins of the Temple of uh, Time, and you see the uh, Ocarina of Time Hyrule. But to be fair, I really ruins. don't think there is a timeline for the Zelda games. Like, I yes, honestly, there is. I yeah, there is. Do not there think, is. I honestly do not think that like the developers were actually thinking of a timeline when they started the Zelda franchise, and only maybe later on. They've been like, okay, like let's try to like timeline all of this, but everything else kind of seems just like very like just let's just shove it in here in the timeline and try to make sense of it, you know? Um, well, Nintendo has stated that there was a timeline after Majora's Mask. Okay. So any game released after Majora's Mask is at it's confirmed that it's uh, in the timeline. There you go. Okay, anything, so that makes anything sense. Anything before that could be left to interpretation and by decided oh, to be sure. official by Nintendo. And and I would <laughs> and I would buy that that after Majora's Mask, you know, there is a timeline because that's kind of time enough. and everything. 
after that, you know, it kind of does make a bit more sense that maybe they're like, yeah, let's maybe start trying to put a timeline together for yeah. these games. After the game about time travel. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, it'll be fun. Um, nobody here owns a Wii U, do they? No. Not personally. I've got a few friends that do. Is that a console? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> It's a nice it's console. One of those they got things Smash that those Brothers. Puny peasants will purchase and amuse themselves with. Smash those Brothers is not bobbles. puny, you puny mortals. <laughs> Smash Brothers was better on GameCube, and that's it. Whoa! Smash Get out! <laughs> Yo, old school. Just man. because Nintendo the Wii 64. version sucked, the Wii U version's pretty dang cool. I haven't played the Wii U version, so I can. Uh, you have a 3DS. Good. What's that? It's another handheld thing that you probably don't own because you you have con you have PC parts up your ass. Oh, <laughs> wow! And I enjoy you it. All the smack talk tonight. I enjoy the PC I'm, parts. I'm up extra there. sassy Someone's tonight. I'm sorry. Sassy. Is your girlfriend like a console gamer or something? Like you're trying to stand up for her? Like, Who? what is going on here? I'm single. Is that? Were you talking to me or him? I was talking to you. I'm single. Oh. It's okay. You'll find your console queen soon. No. Console queen. <laughs> She'll be PC master Jesus. race or not at all. <laughs> Good luck with that. Yeah. Hi, welcome to your first date with dude. First question. PC or not? <laughs> <laughs> PC or a... no games at all? <laughs> Pretty much. PC or staying Ouya. single? <laughs> Does that count? I have a Ouya. <laughs> Ouya? I actually don't. Oh <laughs> I actually don't. I, like I actually that. don't. I like the Ouya's concept. Or just be like, question one, WASD or what was it? Like A, B, X, Y. That's how you know. What? Savage. <laughs> I'm just what saying. Wah, what? Wah. WASD, you know, like WASD keys or A, B, X, Y. W-A-S-D, A, B, X, what is A, B, X, Y? That... That's horrible. What? what? That... Wow, what are he you doesn't even really know. About? Brian, look at your keyboard. Look at A, look at B, look at X, look at Y. They're like, you have to have a hideously deformed hand to hit oh, those wait. keys easily. <laughs> wait, doesn't the, doesn't the Nintendo have an A, B, X, Y? So does it Xbox oh, yeah. 360. Oh, Come right. on, it's guys. It's Xbox 360, guys. I don't Nobody have else. one. Fuck wow. That's when you know there are no <laughs> console gamers in this room. <laughs> Well, I do have a GameCube controller in front of me, so I okay, do feel shame. A normal console <laughs> system. Oh, fuck you. Wah, wah. That's how you know whether she's a PC gamer or a console gamer. You just ask her, what does WASD mean? And if they don't know, it's like, next. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, should we talk about the Star Trek VR? Yeah, go for it. Okay, so there's five players, right? Yes. Tell me that you know five friends that all have an $800 VR headset with that $1,500 computer capable of running the headset. Okay, first of all, I don't Wait, even it... think I have five friends that actually like Star Trek. <laughs> I mean, that's the One. problem right there. Where the fuck are you going to find five friends with five VR sets? I mean, even I myself am not a fan of Star Trek, so that just makes it near impossible for me to play this game. <laughs> is it Vive exclusive, or does Rift support it? I Probably not Rift, because Rift is a mm. dick bag. Yeah, fuck <laughs> it's Rift. It's a bat full of dicks. It's a Rift full of dicks. Seriously, after I was they pull. asking that though. Yeah. I do have Did we actually talk Xbox about what they pulled? Something. We should say that. Yeah, we should. I don't have much details, like in depth details, so I'll let you guys talk about it. What are I we talking know... about? <laughs> what Rift did. What Rift did to have no idea. corner the market of VR gaming or try to before they re rescinded it. I know the basics of it. Is I do too. One... Shro, you went on oh, a tangent about it. I tried to do all the exclusive deals. Yes. Yep. Oh yeah. Nah, fuck when, yeah. When, so when three months Oculus ago, has <laughs> got the pocketbook of Facebook because Facebook bought them. You might recall, and they went to E3 and went, "Wow, 
There's a pretty good VR market here. Want a six-figure paycheck for your company as a donation so that you make it Oculus Rift exclusive? And almost everybody at E3 said, yes, give me that money. Wow. And then with their store, they said that they were going to open their store to all VR headsets. And then uh, they, when the store released, it wasn't. So this this guy who found uh, and modded the, the 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 store to make you believe that you had a Rift and while you were probably using a Vive, and it was working, and Rift was like, oh, okay. But after E three, they patched it, and it never worked again. So the modder, what they had, what he had to do. They they said it. They patched it because of security reasons. They didn't want piracy. So the modder said, "Okay, well, I'll I'll see what I can do." And he remade another mod for it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and this time, that mod completely removed the D, uh, the D, DR, DRM. Yep. That th- from the games in order to be played. So by their security patch, just encouraged piracy and made it easier. And Damn. all be- all because they lied and they said that they were not going to be exclusive. Um, that they wanted that the VR market available to everybody. I mean, the store was, the money would still go to them. It's just, it'll be available for everybody. But they're like, nope. Completely. They basically just wanted like, yeah, they wanted to dominate the market. Yeah, with all but, their Facebook money. But with lies. And lies. And flim flams. Yep. Shame or shame. Lies and flim flams. So that's 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 my take on the Star Trek game VR. It's like you, there's no way that anybody's gonna get either buy five VR headsets or get five friends that each have a VR set. So for that case, might as well just pay like what ninety nine nine or nine ninety nine and buy the Artemis Bridge Simulator and have a land party. Yep. And it's a whole fuck ton of fun, let me tell you. Because you don't need VR, because you you have in front of you the screen, which is just a screen. There's no characters, there's no avatars. It's, just, it's literally you watching your screen being the uh, the dashboard. And you don't need to be a fan of Star Trek in order to enjoy Artemis. Exactly. True. And then they made so, another one called Pulsar. Granted, I'm pretty sure... Oh, no, it was Pulsar, I was going to say. One of them didn't actually look like Star Trek. It just stole the concept. Yeah, Pulsar is with avatars, and Artemis is with uh, panels? How do you call Battle it? Battle stations. Battle stations, yeah. So you are, like, you yourself in real life are the captain. As when Pulsar, your avatar is the character, and you walk around the ship. Battle stations at the ready. Battle stations at the ready, Captain. So did, you were saying something about an affordable VR? Yes, I was. Thank you, Squaz. There is an app for your PC and phone called V-Ridge by software developer Riftcat. It does not take a super high-end graphics card to do. And it takes your smartphone. If you have Google, if it supports Google Car, Google Cardboard, it will work with this. All you need is a viewer, your smartphone, and the server app and your the mobile app, and then it'll work as a Steam VR at the very least, and as a pseudo Oculus Rift. So you have that much going. So where can and you get the uh, cardboard? You can get the cardboard for. Just about any person that makes a viewer for it. I know Viewmaster makes one, but that's like a kid's thing, I guess. There is a free one you can get from unofficialcardboard.com. You just pay shipping. Maybe buy a head strap, so it's a little... It actually does cost money there. But that's made of cardboard, literally. I'd recommend getting a plastic one if you can find it on Amazon. Hmm. You might look into that. You will. Uh, the app does have a paywall of like $15 USD. 
but you can try it out for 10 minutes at a time for free. So you can see if you like it or not, and then it costs you 15. Yep. Instead of 800. Exactly. You just have to have a smartphone that works with it. And I pasted that into the chat for anyone that wanted to see the requirements. Awesome. All right. So, I mean, um, I would like to talk a little bit about Overwatch before we end this podcast. Oh, God, yes. So, Overwatch, you know, that's still a thing. We're still playing that mm -hmm. really often. Well, Brian and I are, anyway. Squaz doesn't have it, and Shro doesn't have it either. All right. You could have just but said still. Squaz and Shro doesn't have it. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, know. I, I can't words. I'm, yeah. But yeah, Overwatch, still fucking awesome, still kicking. Oh, and one tiny thing they got. They got competitive mode. Oh my god, they got competitive yeah. mode. Yeah, season one has started and will go on for two months, I think. I think it's going to be a month and a half just for logistical reasons, they were saying. Yeah, and then it's um, going to take a break that, for two Every weeks. season's going to go on for three months, I think, with like a couple of, like a week or yeah. two of break. Yeah. In between seasons. So you'll end up with like four seasons or something. For, Sounds about uh, right. Yeah. So, yeah. And I mean, like, they'll reset the ladder and, you know, you're. What is one of the cool things that you can get from playing a season, dude? Run? Do you know? Well, I forget some of the stuff off the top of my head. But if you get to rank 500, which is fucking insane in the span of a month and a half or two. You will get an animated spray exclusively for that season. Damn. I think the other one's like a player icon. Right, yes. So yeah. there are player icons and sprays available. Actually, an animated spray, I believe, you do get. Yes, for getting the high ranks and stuff. Right. And one thing I just remembered, uh, each round you win, you get a... A point of something. I forget what it's called, but it's like a purple point. Purple is a kind you, of competitive token. Yeah, of some competitive sort. token. If you get 300 wins total in, I guess it's any league or any competitive match, whatever. Mm -hmm. You could win or lose, but as long as you have 300 wins total, you can buy golden versions of your character's weapons. Oh, yes. Individually. And it's, oh my god. God, it, it, Genji's looks like the sex. Is My it with, within a season, or can you like say get 150 in the first season and then 150 in the second season? I do believe it's gonna. Be it's a bit seasons. early to know, but I'm pretty sure it's points you can keep through seasons. Yeah, because I feel like they're gonna be adding more, um, more of these, you know, customizable just what, what's like vanity items. Yeah, they better, because that'd be a fucking awesome right there. Oh, yes. As long as they don't go the way of TF2, where you can actually change the weapon's functions and abilities. I feel like once it got to that, that kind of broke the game for me. I still enjoy TF2, but that yeah, kind of broke the a... balance of the game for me. Yeah. So you could have a pyro acting as a spy with a back burner out and just like burr, burr. <laughs> I gotta admit though, those were fun times when I did that. Yeah. Cause I'm usually the type of person that likes to go in guns blazing. And Me too. Yeah. Sometimes like, you know, sometimes I don't find anybody on my way there. So then when I run back and I see them all and their butts are just looking at me, I'm like, oh, hello, back burner. Hello, butts. Oh, yes. So, you know, hopefully it doesn't get to that, but I feel my Reaper needs those golden shotguns. Yes, golden it gun. does. Mm -hmm. My Mercy needs that golden staff. Oh, yes. To heal all the I've been playing butts. a lot more Mercy lately. Just in competitive, I suck at everything else. Okay, fair enough. But you're, okay, I'm good with you're Lucio, really too. good Mercy, I'll say that. Thank you. Yeah. I play offensively a little too much. It's kind of sad. I need to put the pistol down and use the staff more and run away more. But unfortunately, when I need to run away, things aren't able to help me run away because I need a party member to do that. That's true. 
It sucks, but it's good though. We'll have to play some more competitive really soon, like as in tomorrow. Mm. Yes, tomorrow, definitely. We'll do that. We should play soon as in like after this podcast. <laughs> or after this podcast. Yeah, I gotta go to bed after this but podcast. It is kinda late, even though it is, you know, only the first of July, but it is late, so we'll have to do that some other time. Brent, you have tomorrow's day off. Wherever you work, tomorrow is off. <laughs> I wish. Really? And I'm working? unemployed. You're I'm working? always off. <laughs> You're working on a statutory holiday? Yeah, I work on the railroads, man. Like, there's no days off. Dude, working double time. Double time. I've been working oh, on the railroad. Oh, oh that's going to be awesome. Double time. Looking forward to that. <clears throat> all right, guys. So I think that is pretty much all for the podcast today. Unless if I'm forgetting something. Um, oh, yeah, did you lock the cat out? Did, did you change your underwear? I was saving that for next weekend. <laughs> so we'll have to get to that. <laughs> yeah, next I... podcast. <laughs> next po- <laughs> yeah. So the next podcast, dude, and Brian will have changed our underwear. I so usually tr- I usually try weeks. to ch- uh, match my uh, weekly shower with my changing of underwear. So right, or else it just throws everything just out of balance. Yeah. Also, just it's just a waste. It kind of is. You know, if it's so good, just wear it. It's always better when it get when you get it to the point where it kind of crunches a little when you move. <laughs> Mine seems to crunch when it's washed, and then the more I wear it, it just kind of gets looser and looser. You break the crust down. Yeah. Sounds amazing. Take a shot. No, I oh, yeah, for... that's a game, right? <laughs> but it was for awesome, so you kind of failed there. No, amazing and awesome. I feel like if we're going to do that, it's just anything I say will be like a take a shot day. Brian That's kind speaks, of the point. Shot. We have like <laughs> awesome, amazing. Shroud rad. goes on a tangent about something. Take a shot. True. Dude, I, I get sassy. Like take a shot. Die of alcohol poisoning. Squaz goes on a rant about anything. Take a shot. <laughs> really? Squaz Every is only twenty four percent dangerous. Take a shot. Ubisoft related. <laughs> Squaz is complaining. Take a shot. <laughs> <laughs> Good times. All right, guys, so uh, once again, if you want to find us, we are on the Insomniacs Anonymous website. You can find out in the descriptions below. Dude Run does run a YouTube channel, which is pretty awesome, so make sure to check that out in the description below. And I will be starting a twitching stream back again. Actually, I'm going to be starting it next week, so look out for that on Tuesday. No, Monday. Monday. Yes, look out for that on Monday. I'll be holding you to that, Brian. Yes, you can hold me to that. Okay, I will hold it's you finally, all day and all night until it's it happens. It's finally been decided on Monday. Okay. And um, Squaws, anything else you'd like to add? Anything that you're doing that you'd like to talk about? Or is are we pretty much good on just finding you on the website? Well, just because on the website. I'm in. Uh, awesome. but... <laughs> All right. Just finding so, me on the website right now. I'm just gonna keep playing you online. I get some more stories and more failures, and probably get my dangerous level to twenty five percent. Side into the danger, danger zone. zone. <laughs> Gonna get right into the danger, danger zone. zone. Yeah, should probably should probably edit that song in. <laughs> as, an, uh, as an exit, I think that's illegal. That's gonna be no. That'll be our exit song from from now on. Um, it's I, I, I have to I question the legality the of this. It. Well, we're okay. not making money with this, so true. But <laughs> maybe one day. Oh, well, then we just take this one off and mute it. Or we could not monetize, which might be a thing. Whichever of. All right, guys. Thank you so much for being uh, here. Um, no. On behalf of my so- oh yeah no Metro? no. But I, no, no, a, no. Insomniacs Anonymous, is running a Discord server, if you have not noticed yet. Oh my god, if you have not noticed, like, you, you guys need to get on that Discord server, because that is where we are talking now. Yes, go to the forums, where there should be happen. a link to join it, talk to Brian, myself, or Shro to get verified, also Fire Tits McGee has the verification rights as well. 
Uh, I don't. Yeah. Squaz is not. He is no, I don't want it dangerous either. enough. I He's not dangerous it. enough, too. <laughs> Even if I was, don't want it. Okay. <laughs> I don't want it. I don't want it. And he with want Discord, to be uh, we've accidentally brought back the return of uh, the furry porn hour. So come join us for that, because it's any hour when we feel like it. Yeah. And sometimes for more than an hour. That sounds terrible. <laughs> yes. It's even Anthrocon weekend. The furries are going fucking crazy. Anthrocon is a convention in Pittsburgh. Yeah, should furries. Be going to we figured. <laughs> yeah. Anthro furries, not furries in general. Well, I guess that's the same thing. Uh, what? I don't know. I'm shutting up. Stop now. it. Stop it. You're doing that thinking thing again. I'm shutting right. up now, God. I think this is as good a time as any to call to say goodbye. So on behalf of the <laughs> Cat in the Box, Dude and Squaws, thank you for joining us, and we'll see you next time. We're the Insomniacs Anonymous, and we are out. Danger zone. It's my, it's my bedtime. Get out of my house. Well, get out of your house when I've been serviced. No, oh, you get my. the fuck out of my house without service. You service yourself. Fine, I'll service myself and then I'll get out of your bed. Okay. Oh, are, are, are we still alive? <laughs>